Teddy, I work in the technology department for the library, and I, I mainly work at Riverfront, but I work do go to all three of the branches. And I'm so excited to talk to you today about 3D printing. And I think it's great that uh, Palisade Prep was able to get their hands on a 3D printer because it's really a lot of fun. And I'll tell you something, the kids really need very little guidance. They kind of, you give them a little bit and the kids take it and go and it's amazing what they come up with and they will start creating as soon as you give them the tools they will start creating things you can't believe that they created so I'm really really excited and I would also like to put out there that I'm available if you want me to do a remote session with the kids once you have the printer and once you start learning I would I would have no problem doing that for you as well um, so Tonight, there's so many things that I can talk about, but tonight I'm just going to focus on the 3D printing aspect of it. So I do have a little uh, presentation that I put together. So I'm going to share my screen. And I'll go ahead and start this up. So this just has uh, my information. And we're going to do a little program on getting started with Tinkercad. So my name is Christine Batetti. Um, that is my title, the Technology Instruction Coordinator for the library. I am not a librarian. I tell the kids all the time when they come on their class trips. I'm one of the few people that work in the library that's not a librarian, and I get to work with technology all day. Um, so if anybody needs to reach out to me too, um, Z, if you could just throw my email address in the chat. It's cbatetti at ypl.org. Um, and any, anybody is free to reach out to me at any time with any type of technology question. We can help with just about everything. And if we can help, we'll figure out how to help you. Okay, so we're going to talk about Tinkercad. Okay, so um, my first slide is the introduction to Tinkercad. Before I even show you Tinkercad, I wanted to go over this. So at first, going to we want to break down Tinkercad, right? Because it actually has a meaning behind it. It's not just a website or software or an app. It actually has a meaning behind it. So what does Tinker mean, right? So I know we have an ELA teacher on here. Um, and I put the definition as a person because you can tinker, which is a verb, right? Or you can be a tinkerer, which is a, a noun, right? So a tinker was a person, kind of an old fashioned term, if you will. Um, but it was a person who enjoys fixing and experimenting with machines and their parts. So that's where the tinker part came from. And then the second part of the word is CAD, C-A-D, and that actually stands for something. So CAD stands for Computer Aid Aided Design, um, and it I have the definition here. It's Computer Aided Design is used as a in a wide range of computer-based tools that assist engineers and architects in design activities. So whenever somebody is going to design something, they have to use CAD software to do it. And Tinkercad is a very easy, user-friendly, entry-level uh, website for learning um, how to design. And I, I've used a couple of different ones, and there are there are other ones called Blender and SketchUp um, that are a little bit more advanced to me, at least. Um, the reason I learned how to do this was because when I came to the library, um, they asked me, do you know 3D printing? And I said, no. And they said, OK, well, that box over there is a 3D printer. So open it up and let's see how, you know, how to get it to work. So I did experiment with a couple of different things and I've always gone back to Tinkercad. And even with ex five years experience, I still use Tinkercad. So even people that are more advanced, they go back and they use Tinkercad too. It's very, very uh, user-friendly. So the link for Tinkercad is www.tinkercad.com. And the first thing that you're going to wanna do is create an account for yourself, okay? And then what you can do with Tinkercad 
You can download designs. So some people create designs and they make them public and you can go up there and you can just download it and send it to your printer, which is a super easy way, by the way, to get started. So if you just want to introduce the printer and how it works, instead of jumping into the design aspect, one of the easiest things to do is find something that's been designed and print it and watch how it prints. Um, so you can also create, modify, and share your designs, and you can also order things, but you guys are lucky enough to have a printer, so you don't have to order them, you can print them yourself. Um, the library does have a couple of 3D printers at the Riverfront Library. I have two. I have uh, MakerBot printers. I don't know what the brand is that you guys have at Palisade Prep, um, if you happen to know it. Oh, I don't know it, but I yeah. will learn that. <laughs> okay, there's a few different kinds. Uh, MakerBot is one of the big ones. They're actually located in Brooklyn. Um, there's also LulzBot. There's a bunch of different types of printers, but we have MakerBots. So at Riverfront, I have two. I have a very big one. Um, so it can print up to like 18 inch designs, which is really big. And then I have a smaller one, which prints about a five inch design. And then the Crestwood Library also has one and the Will Library has one as well. So all three of our libraries have 3D printers in them and they're all MakerBots. Um, so I'm going to uh, just talk a little bit about how 3D printing works. I didn't really want to bore you guys with a video. So I figured I'd just kind of uh, summarize it for you. Um, but basically the way that it works is the printer has a printer bed and there's something called an extruder. Okay. So you feed the plastic into the extruder, which heats up to 225 degrees Celsius. It has a spring inside of it. It heats up, it melts the plastic, pushes it through the, uh, through the uh, extruder, and then it comes out on the other side. So when it comes out on the plate, it comes out cold because it's being cooled by the fan. So it immediately heats up. And as soon as it prints, it's cold. So whoever it is that's going to be working with the printer, um, the prints are actually not hot. It's the extruder that's hot. Um, but I always, you know, you always want the kids to keep their hands out. The, the printer will buzz or beep or whatever when it's done, when it's safe to go ahead and take the object off. Um, so that's how it works. It goes back and forth, layer by layer. Um, it takes the code from your file. So you'll have to have a special kind of file, which I'll show you in Tinkercad. Um, and it goes back and forth, prints layer upon layer. And when it beeps, you're done. Um, it's not a terribly fast um process. The kids, you know, they hit print and they want something to pop out nowadays, you know, and in 10 seconds and that's not the way it works but it's really exciting if you can print something even start something up in the beginning of the day and the kids can kind of once they're in school maybe more often they can come by and check on it and see the progress that it's made so the kids really enjoy that um, so i am going to go ahead and um, stop sharing my powerpoint presentation and i'm going to share uh my Google Chrome. So let me come out of here. Oh, I want to come out of there. Let me do my stop share. Here we go again. And then I'm going to switch over to Chrome. And then let me do my share again. And hopefully I can get over. There we go. Okay. So I've already gone to tinkercad.com. This is what the first screen looks like when you get over there. And in the upper right hand corner, you have the ability to sign in once you have an account, or of course you can click join now. Okay. Without creating an account, you can click on some of these other things. So you could jump in here and if you wanted to search to print um, a pumpkin or a penguin or something, you can click on there and do a search. Um, so you don't have to log in in order to use the site. Um, the reason why you want to log in is because once you start downloading designs or creating designs, you're going to want to log into your account so that you can see the things that you've created. And the nice thing is because it's cloud based, a child can a student can learn during the day. And then you can say, okay, tonight, go home work, you know, your assignment for tonight is to work a little bit further on your uh, object, and they can go home and they can log into the account and they can continue working. So that's, that's super helpful that it's online. 
Okay. There's also a, an aspect that I'm just going to mention. I'm not going to show because it's a little bit, um, it's a little bit cumbersome, but there is a feature uh, for a teacher to actually set up a classroom. Um, and what happens is you'll give the classroom a name and those students can log in. So they wouldn't have to have personal accounts. They could log in as students to the teacher's account. Okay, um, but if someone wants to create their own personal account, you would simply click on join now. And here, this is where they're, they're starting to tie it into school. So this, this window looks a little bit different than it used to. Um, so here you could say, if you're in a school, educators start here or students can join their class. So you could do this without actually having them create personal accounts. Or if somebody wants to create a personal account, they can just click here at the bottom. Okay, all it asks for is, I think, first name, last name, birth date, and email address. And that's pretty much it. So it's fairly simple and it's free, of course. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click on sign in and I'm going to sign in with my own account. Okay, so I'm going to put in my username and then my password. And I'm logged in. So you can see here, this is my account. Okay, so I'm logged into my account. And you can see here, these are some things that I have created. So uh, I do lots of keychains because they're when when one of the kids wants something, I usually say, do you want it in a keychain just because it prints faster because it's generally smaller. Uh, but these are some of the things that I've printed. The library takes 3D print requests. So sometimes I'll get an email. This was one I got recently. This was a, um, a watering, like a planter, a self-watering planter that somebody created and they asked me to print for them. Um, so that was kind of cool. That was a patron request, okay? So here you can see some of the keychains. We also have chess and checker sets printed. Um, so lots of neat things. This here is a, the COVID hook, which we passed out to the staff um, for opening doors and pressing elevator buttons. So that was pretty handy too. Okay, so up here at the top of the screen, okay, here are my classes. So I'd be able to see the 3D print class that I have set up for the library. Um, you can browse in the gallery. So if I click on gallery, it'll give you an idea of some of the things that people are designing. It's really quite, amazing when you look at some of the things. So right now, Tinkercad is celebrating their 10th birthday, which you can, I think, tell by all of their designs. Um, so they have a lot of things relating to that. Uh, there's also a blog. There's a learning page. This is actually how I learned how to use Tinkercad. 100%. I didn't know anybody that knew 3D printing or designing. I didn't know what software to use. And I jumped on here and I went on learn. And this is how I learned. I started to come through here and I started to click on the different lessons. And I basically taught myself. So if the kids are looking for a lesson um, and you're too busy to prepare a lesson, you can come in here to tinkercad.com, tell them, jump on to lessons and go ahead, start, start making, you know, somebody make the Minecraft glasses, somebody make the chess pawn, somebody make me a six inch ruler um, and the luggage tag, which I actually do have on the backpacks that we use when we go away. I have 3D printed luggage tags on them. So these are great little lessons um, and they're a great way to get started. And the search bar, the search button here, if I click on search, if I'm looking for a particular item. So recently I actually printed the Library of Congress. So I said, I wonder if somebody designed that already. And I did a search and I found one. So you can search for anything. Um, I'm just gonna print, I'm gonna search here for Castle cause I'm gonna get more hits when I search for that. But if I go in here, like I said, anybody can create a castle and then make it public. So you may look through here and see some that are really nice. And you may look through and see some that are very basic. Um, when you find something that you like in Tinkercad, you can click on it and you'll get a couple of different options. So if I say, hey, I really like this castle, 
um, but maybe I'm going to put, you know, Batetti, Castle of Batetti on the side of it, or I'm going to put a big B or a big P for Palisades Prep, right? So you want to take it and kind of cl clone it, but make it your own. That's what this is here, copy and tinker. So it allows you to make a copy of what someone's already created and then add a little twist to it to kind of make it your own. Or you can simply say, yeah, I, this is definitely what I want. So I'm going to go ahead and download it. So when I click on download, you get this download window. And this is an important part of understanding 3D printing. So when, what you're doing is you're taking a file that's been created with CAD software, and now you're downloading that file in order to send it to your printer, okay? The printer needs it to be a, a specific type of a file. So here it's letting us know that we could either download it as a .stl file or an OBJ file. So it's an object file or an STL file. The STL stands for uh, stereolithography. <laughs> um, I, that's not really important, but somebody always asks that question. So now I just say it. Um, we deal strictly with STL files. We ask you if you want something printed at the library, find it online, download it as an STL file, and then send an email to 3D printing at ypl.org. See if you could throw that in the chat too. 3D printing at ypl.org. You send me it that comes to me. And then you attach your attach your STL file and just let me know, you know, I'd like the following file printed. Um, I do take requests for colors. Um, we don't always have all the colors, but we try to fit, uh, fill the request for color. So that's what we ask. And we also ask that you do have a library card. We don't mandate it, um, but it's definitely one of the services that we offer it for free. And you know, in return for us offering for free, it would be great if you had a library card. Um, so here I would click on that I wanted to download this as an STL file. And what happens is it instantly goes on my computer. It's called castle.stl and it goes to your downloads folder on your computer. So in your, on your computer, if you were to navigate with your file explorer and you went to downloads, you would see that file. Usually you see them in, in date order and it would be right up here at the top. So you would do an email, attach that file to me and then I take that request. Now, what happens um, on, your, on my computer, the second part of the designing is the printing. So I will take that STL file and I will open it up with MakerBot software. So the MakerBot software comes with my printer. Um, so that's why I'm not exactly sure what printer you're using. You may have a different um, program. That's called the slicing program. Um, if you happen to be looking for information online, you might say they call it the slicer. Um, so the slicer software that we use is the MakerBot software. And then once we open up in MakerBot, we can do different things with it. We can resize it. We can make it smaller or larger. Um, I can decide if I want it to print a little bit faster. Um, I can change the amount of um, hollowness to the object. So for example, um, one of the uh, settings is fill percentage. And by default, it's set to 10% fill, which means when you look at this object from the outside, it looks like a solid object. But if you were to cut it in half, you would see that inside there's waffling of the plastic. And what happens is it kind of crisscrosses in, an, in a pattern where it leaves kind of gaps, almost like a honeycomb type of a thing, if that's um, easier to understand. Um, so the hollower you make it, the lighter the object and the less plastic you use and the faster it prints. If you someone said, I need this to be, you know, a solid object, it's going to take a lot longer and generally don't print solid objects. Never really printed more than 30% fill um, on my 3D printers. Uh, so just to kind of th throw that at you to do all this kind of settings and things to think about once you start using your printer. Okay, so we can copy and tinker 
or we can download. So now I'm going to click on Copy and Tinker. And this is going to open up in Tinkercad. And it's putting it on what's called my work plane. OK, so what's happening here is the blue checkered background that you see, that's called the work plane. And that is supposed to represent the bottom of the base of the printer, the bottom of the printer or the print plate, if you will. That's where your object will actually print. And this, I'm flipping it around, is my object. OK, so there's my castle. I'm actually holding down my I'm, I'm on a, um, a touchpad on a laptop. So I'm holding down the right mouse button and I'm rolling my finger on the trackpad to do this. So this is where um, 3D, the whole 3D experience really kind of comes in. You don't tend to think in 3D until you have to design something. And I usually say to the kids, if I'm teaching them, if I gave you a pencil and I asked you to draw a house, think about what you would draw. What would you draw? You would draw probably a square, right, for the house, then maybe a triangle on the top for a roof, maybe a rectangle for the door, maybe a square for a window. But look at your house, you're probably looking at, at it in one dimension. Right? You're looking flat at a piece of paper. Did you draw a back door? Did you draw you know, something in the backyard? Did you draw side windows? Probably not because we're used to you know, seeing things and designing things in one dimension with a pencil and a piece of paper. And now we have to think about every single aspect of what we're creating, right? So this castle has a front door. And as I turn it, okay, the sides are um, solid, right? So there was a, quite a bit of thought put into this, okay? And it's, you can see here, now I can look at it from different angles. This is a top view. I can even flip it upside down and look at what it looks like from the bottom, okay? So now that I have this object, I have these tools on the right-hand side, which are going to allow me to edit this file, okay? So I can scroll down and I can look at all of these tools that are already available to me, right? Here's a text tool. So if I wanted to, you know, throw the words Batetti's Castle on it, I could just click on it and, you know, do a few things, but I would easily be able to add my name to this object. So there's a lot of different things that you can do. These are simple kind of basic tools that you could use, okay? so. The other thing that I want to talk about is your file name. So in the upper left hand corner, this is where your file name is. So this is called copy of castle simply because I made a copy of a file called castle. Um, I can change that at any time. So if I want to click here and change it, I could do PP uh, castle, okay, or YPL castle. I can give it any name I want. I press enter when I'm done. Okay. Believe it or not, that's going to be important because when you're done with your file, remember how before we clicked on download and we chose STL. We have to export this file when we're done with it. And you'll see pretty much that same window. You kind of have the same choices here. We would choose to download it as an STL and again, in the lower left-hand corner, that file is named ypl.castle.stl. So whatever you name the file in the upper left is what your STL file is going to be called, okay? So I'm going to click on this icon in the upper left-hand corner. The Tinkercad logo is actually an icon. It's Tinkercad Home. So we'll take you back to the home screen, kind of where we started after we logged in, right? We logged in and we saw all the different things that I had. And this uh, the logo will take me back to that screen. If I click on create new design, the big, big uh, blue button there at the top, what's going to happen is it's going to take me to a work plane that's empty. 
Okay. And now it's up to me to create from scratch, which is a very, very hard thing to do. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is look at that file name. Tinkercad uses a very odd method of naming their files. So I would never know that this is, you know, a keychain or whatever it is I'm about to make. So I want to come up there and change the name. And I'm going to call this, um, I'll do YPL keychain and press enter. Anytime I can click back up there, change the name, not a big deal. Okay, now here's my work plane. And here are my tools. If I want to start an object, I'm going to come over here to my tools, click with my left mouse, and I can drag something over and place it onto my work plane. From here, it almost becomes like a piece of modeling clay that you can adjust. Okay, every tool that you pull over, you will have to set three dimensions for. Okay, so you have your X. I know we don't, have, I don't think we have a math teacher on here. I know we have an English teacher, but we have to set our X and Y and also our Z. So our X goes left to right, our Y runs up and down like this, and the Z is the height which is controlled here in the center, okay? So as I click around, I can see this is 20, this is 20, and my height is 20. That 20 indicates uh, millimeters, not inches. So this is a little cube. It's maybe the size of a, a die or so, like the size of a maybe a large dice. The rule of thumb that I use for the students when I train them is I try to tell them the best rule of thumb I can give you is 25 millimeters uh, to an inch. So if we were going to make a three inch keychain, we'll use 75 millimeters. Kind of an easy way to do the conversion because most of us aren't doing metric system. Um, so right now this is a perfect cube, right? It's 20 by 20 by 20. So if I want to keep it as a perfect cube, I can hold down my shift key and I can drag one of these corners out and it's getting bigger, it's getting taller, okay? Everything is changing because I'm holding the shift key. When I hold the shift key, it keeps proportion and it just makes it larger or smaller, okay? If I don't hold down the shift key and I just move one of those measurements, that would be the height, now the height is smaller, but the outside stayed the same, okay? All of this takes lots of hands-on practice, believe me. <laughs> um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make a very quick, simple keychain, okay? So what I'm looking to do is I'm looking to make this more of a rectangle, right? And a little more flat because we don't want anybody carrying around a giant keychain, okay? So I'm using those corners to resize. Those are little resizing handles, okay? So I can click on my object or I can click off of my object. I like to click off of the object a lot because all of those little boxes go away and then I can look at it from different aspects and I can decide if that's exactly what I want. And if it's not, I click on my object again. I click on those white squares and another easy way to size this, if I knew I wanted this to be three inches, is to click here and type in 75 for the width. Come over here, click on 20 for my Y, and then I can click on the height, and I'm going to make that three, three millimeters. So this is a thin little keychain. Okay. I can use these view buttons on the left hand side to zoom in on my object, it is not changing the size of the object, it's simply changing the zoom. Or I can use the minus to zoom out. When you're working, I usually tell people this too. Imagine somebody handed you um, a handful of um, Lego, right? And you were gonna snap them together. You wouldn't hold the Lego, you know, three feet in front of your face while you were trying to put it together because you're tinkering, right? So you would bring that closer to you so that you can see when you're tinkering. And it's the same thing here when you're designing. You wanna bring that nice and close so that when you're making changes to it, 
you can see it right in front of your face. Okay. The other thing you can do is move it around on your grid. So I can move it to a spot on my grid where now this object is sitting on this line. So your grid in the background really is like grid paper. You know, you can see how many lines you're taking up, how many squares you're taking up. So I have a good idea of now, see that from the side? I can see it's set on this line and on this line. Okay, so these tools over here are gonna help you with that. Okay, if I wanna zoom back out, I click on my minus and I can zoom out. Again, I'm holding down that right mouse button to turn in 360, 360 degrees. I can turn that work plane around so I can see the object. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab another tool. I'm going to grab the tube. I'm going to pull it over here and I'm going to kind of put it on the side there. And I'm going to drop it. So what's happened? Are they the same? No, they're not. So the height of my tube, I'm going to click here, is 10. And remember the height of this was five, uh, three. Okay, I thought it was five, I'm glad I checked. So I'm going to click on the height and I'm going to click here and I'm going to type in three and press enter. And now they're the same height, okay? And now I want them to be aligned. So I'm going to select both of the objects. I can click on the orange one, hold down my shift key and click on the red one. And now they're both selected because I used shift and I can use what's called the align tool. And I want them aligned over here in the center. And they snap right together. Okay, and you can see here the orange and, and red are kind of bleeding together because they're just about in the same exact spot. Okay, the last thing I'm going to do, oh, you can, if I'm going too slow or if I'm, you know, if you need me to move along, you can please let me know. I'm trying to get everything in here. Perfect. Okay, great. So another way to, to um, select objects is by drawing uh, a rectangle or a square around your object. So instead of doing the shift, the clicking with the shift, I can click out here, hold my left mouse button down and select both of my objects. And I can use this tool here called group. So when I click on group, what's happened? Those two objects have become one. And now I have myself a little keychain. And the last thing that I do with that keychain is I add my name. So I'm going to come up here, find that text tool, drag it over here. Now, you don't have to drag it right onto the keychain because it's hard to work with your text and your keychain at the same time. So we'll put the text here. Now, also, one thing to mention is it doesn't matter what color you de design in. If I have gray, plastic in the printer, it's going to come out gray, regardless of what colors the kids design in. Um, so you want to make sure that you have the right color in the printer that you want. I change the colors here just because it's easier. If I'm going to place this on top of that, I don't want to place red text on top of a red object. So you have this uh, solid option here that brings up the color panel, and you can choose a different color. Okay, so my text is being pulled from here. That's where it's getting the word text. So I'm gonna put YPL, okay, for Yonkers Public Library. So that's going to be my text. Now I'm going to take that text and the same way I resized my square, I can resize my text. So if I want it to be long or high, whatever it is, I wanna make sure that it's gonna fit. So I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller and then I'm gonna drag it down and I'm gonna put it on that keychain. And that's a pretty good fit. Okay, if I want to make it bigger, I can. Okay, the other thing that you can do with your text is you can make it a hole. So if I click on my text, which I am because my boxes are there and I say hole, now it's going to be a hole. So you see here, now that's kind of clear. Those letters are no longer solid. They're clear, they're a whole. So what that means is if I do one more grouping, okay, so I select my keychain, 
and I press group, it's going to punch those letters out of the keychain. So I've created a hole. So instead of having text on top of the keychain, which can get a little bulky, now I've designed my keychain and I can punch these letters through. Um, and now I'm ready to go. My keychain is done. So what would I do here? I would say, okay, let's export this as an STL. I always group before I export so that the object is one. Um, it's just a, a best practice. You don't have to, but it, it makes your life a little bit easier. Um, so I hit export. There's my YPL keychain. And now I would, if I was a patron, I would email it to 3D printing at YPL.org. Um, in your in your school, what you're I'm not sure if you're going to have a networked printer, which means that your computer will actually have a print feature that will go right to your printer, which is great. I have that at the library or the printers print from uh, a USB. So you could also take that file from the hard drive, from downloads, move it to the USB file, and then put it in the printer. If you're going to be working with students, I would definitely recommend putting the student's name or initials or something in the file. That way, when something is printing, you know who that belongs to. Um, so I got... <laughs>